Recently, I helped my friend Steve with a video for his YouTube channel, Sprice Machines. Steve is a chain reaction builder and domino artist whose projects involve hundreds of moving parts that, once set in motion, eventually trigger the final target or goal. In the case of this project, the starting point was a lemon rolling down a slope in the kitchen, and the final goal was to open a tap to serve glasses of lemonade to the builders in the backyard. Now, part of the fun of building these Rube Goldberg-inspired machines is to make things as complicated as possible, and this machine had 117 unique steps from start to finish. The team, including Havesh 5, Doodle Chaos, Invention 11, Smiley Peace Fun, Dr. Complicated, and myself, worked for one week setting up in preparation for one day of filming. We started attempts on Sunday to film the whole thing in one go. If a step of the machine failed, every separate section before it had to be reset. If each section worked 100% of the time, we could have filmed the whole thing on the first try. But even though each individual step had worked at some point during testing, that didn't always mean it would work repeatedly or that it would work in context with the rest of the machine. Starting with take one, we only made it to step five, the cutting board and the ball. Take two made it even less far to step three with the small yellow ball. Take three actually made it all the way to step 22 on the second kitchen table, but the beads got stuck coming out of the cup. Take four didn't get quite as far and ended with step 19, the grape swing. Now the grape swing is a great example of the first main issue with chain reaction machines, wear and tear. In testing the day before, the grapes have worked fine enough, but they were left to hang from the door overnight and between takes. Gravity stretched the string out over time. With more slack, the grapes repeatedly fell short of their target or hit the edge of the door frame. Plus, every time the grapes fell, they pulled the wire holding the string lower. After six grape failures, Steve and Tim reinforced the wire and moved the lunchbox lid target closer, and for the rest of the day, the grapes weren't a problem. Lesson learned, your machine may change over time, and these changes need to be considered in the design, hopefully sooner rather than later. Another important factor in chain reactions is the reset fail. Steve assigned everyone to learn how to reset a specific room or zone within the machine between takes. As familiar as I was with my zone, the living room, during a take, I accidentally placed the purple ball in the wrong basket on the ferris wheel. It feels pretty bad to have the first 55 steps in the machine work perfectly before it comes to a grinding halt due to my mistake. I do have to say that everyone throughout the day was very understanding and patient with each other when we messed up. It just happens. You learn your lesson and try again. Still, there were sections with incredibly specific resets like the connects rod and step three that had to be perfectly balanced on the ledge of the wooden chute. If it was pushed too far back, the yellow ball wouldn't push it off. So the lesson here is design your setups for easy resets and train yourself to know exactly how to reset it to get it to work. The third and final hazard of chain reaction machines is the early trigger. You want each step to easily continue to the next, but sometimes making connections too sensitive will cause the machine to skip steps entirely. The blinds, normally triggered by a domino falling onto a paper plate, started to go off by themselves on three separate instances. Anything could have set them off, from a heavy footstep, to a breeze, to the plate settling over time. It's hard to get the sensitivity right so that the machine doesn't get stuck, but also doesn't go off by itself. I kept track of the successes and fails of each individual part of the machine, and 76 out of the 117 steps worked every time they ran on filming day. However, 41 of the steps did not work every time. In fact, the average reliability of each step was 94%, which doesn't sound that bad, but when each step fails on average once every 20 times, 10 steps will only work half of the time. 20 steps together will only work a third of the time, and 30 steps will work a sixth of the time. For our 117 steps, the average success rate of the entire machine would be 0.07%, or 7 out of 10,000 tries, or one success for every 1,400 attempts. Fortunately, it didn't take us 1,400 attempts to get it right. Every time a step failed from wear and tear, a bad reset, an early trigger, or just bad design, we made adjustments. The problem areas were smoothed out and became more consistent. You can see on this chart, with successes in green and fails in red, that after many adjustments, the failures of the machine became more spread out and random. And by take 68, it happened. We made it all the way to the cell phone in the office, which wasn't the end, but with the sun going down soon, we made an executive decision to use that as a checkpoint and use the phone call to cut to a second take in the final video. Even continuing from there, we had additional struggles with the clock not rolling, the t-shirt getting stuck, the Hot Wheels car not hitting the button, and the balloon not hitting the book. 
but we got the final take after 18 more attempts for a grand total of 86 takes over a nine hour period. Building machines requires persistence, but also a keen eye to be able to identify problems, both before and after they happen. A misdiagnosis of what the actual problem is can lead to more failures. This wasn't even on the pulley. Of course, it's easier to notice weird quirks like this with a frame by frame replay, but when it fails at real speed on set, sometimes you just have to guess and hope your fix makes it work. It's tricky to find a balance between making every step look as cool as possible while still making it function reliably. But with this machine, I think Steve and the team hit that balance perfectly, even though it's the hardest I've ever worked for a glass of lemonade.